outside there's a marriage procession going on right so uh, the boy start boy start i just want to you know uh, thank you people right first of all uh, um, the board really has been right my parents and uh, the target mbs the online group doc doc speak of sankita pindar or dr harshit bora right my senior guide and my family and my friends and right? all of them really helped me okay uh, guys can you hear me because there is there is a marriage procession outside hello okay okay so let let begin right uh according to me yeah i i think i think the real question that we need to ask ourselves is how you need to okay okay just give me give me a second give me a second okay guys i'll speak uh, i'll i'll speak a little louder right so you have 200 questions on your all india entrance examination and a uh, hundred of them are medical and a hundred of them are dental okay uh, so the question okay guys let let's just take a let's just take a break this is for 5 minutes please 5 minutes just give me a second now guys uh this Okay, guys. Guys, uh, let's begin, right? Let's begin. So, uh, let me just give you an overview of uh, how your approach to the AIPG dental entrance examination has to be, right? You have 200 questions, okay? And I have covered this. Yes, I prepared for 10 months, but okay. Let me just let me just uh, let me just say something, right? Let me let me just cover the basic approach to your prep. and uh, after that uh, we'll take we'll do a, a question and answer round okay so first thing is that you do 200 questions right and the topo usually lies in the 75% range okay so basically we get somewhere around 150 to 160 questions correct right 150 to 160 questions correct now you can't really just mark 160 questions in that paper and expect to really talk because you know on the day of the exam uh, you really don't know how well you are performing and you might make a lot of silly mistakes so your job is to mark uh, approximately 180 questions plus or minus 5 so you can probably do it between 175 to 185 right hello is it is it clear now yes 
So, um, right, so what, what was I saying? Right, you need to mark a minimum of 180 questions, right, between 165 to 175. These questions are going to be divided into certain slots. 120 questions are going to be easy questions. When I say easy questions, I mean questions that are basically repeated or questions that are very, very simple based on very simple concepts. Then comes 40 tricky questions, right? 40 tricky questions uh, usually are based on those things that you've done all, the, all through the year with a little twist here and there, right? And this requires you to pay close attention during examination. One very interesting, you know, one very interesting thing I can say to all of you is probably with for the question during the examination, it helps you focus on the question and sometimes it does help you pick out, you know, these, uh, these minor changes in the way the question has been framed. <coughs> okay, so we covered 120 easy questions, 40 tricky questions and now we have, so you need to get the 120 easy questions and the 40 tricky questions right to top. Beyond this, now you have 20 risky questions and you've got 20, hello, you've got 20 risky questions and you've got 20 impossible questions, okay. So, you need to get 160 right and you need to mark up, up to 180. So, that means you have to attempt those 20 risky questions. When I say 20 risky questions, I mean questions that you're able to probably eliminate and somehow manage to reach maybe three options or two options. Correct? Uh, in those 20 risky questions, you will find that 12 to 15 of them will be dental questions. Right? 12 to 15 will be dental questions and around 5 to 8 questions might be medical questions. So, as you see, you have now marked 180 questions. Now come the remaining 20 questions. I would suggest that you just leave those 20 questions. Right? Those are impossible questions. They're going to ask if you. They're going to ask you those questions from very vague places, right? And you, you just won't cover it during your entire preparation. In those 20 questions, you will probably find that 12 to 15 of them are going to be medical questions, and five to eight of them will be dental questions. So, what you realize by the end of the day is that 25, around 20 questions of the medical side, you actually lost. You lost five risky questions and around 15 impossible questions and so you need to ask yourself is it really a wise idea to chase after all the stuff medical questions. On the other hand, right, you have only, you have 15 risky but solvable dental questions and you just have five impossible dental questions. Furthermore, all this extra press that you're going to put in in order to get those 15 risky dental questions right you will also regain in all your safety keys, in the comet case, in the case test, the PGI, all which are entirely and predominantly dental exams and, uh, and have very, very few basic medical questions in there. So, uh, <clears throat> so this is a split. We've got 120, we've got 40, we've got 20 and 20. I personally marked 187 questions in the exam. So I marked up to 180 and then the last seven questions was a very, very tough stretch, but you know, I decided to be aggressive because this was my second attempt and uh, I would really say that you should not lose your aggressiveness because that would be the end of you. I know, right. uh, I know many people who, uh, many of my batchmates who gave the exam and what happened was that they, they reached 120, they reached 130 and then they got nervous, right, and they, and they thought that, okay, you know, let me cut my, uh, let me cut my losses. I'm going to leave the remaining questions, at least I get 120 to 130 right. But remember, since your topper is going to get one, is going to get 150 to 160 questions correct, and he's going to have a minimum of 75 percent, like this time Dr. Arun goes up at 78 percent of his, uh, of the total. Right, he has 78 percent at his total score. So if you mark 120 or 130 and left the paper, you are out of the competition. Okay, you are out of the competition. Your job is to somehow or the other reach 180. You have to mark 180 questions whether you like it or not. This was my second attempt. I marked 187 questions. And in my first attempt, I marked around 155 questions. Okay, so, uh, right, let, let, let's continue. Uh, another thing that you need to realize is that uh, 
this is from 2007 onward the okay just 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 give me a moment please just give me a moment okay guys which what do you want me to repeat Can you guys hear me? Am I slow enough now? Okay, okay. Um, right. So let, let let me just come to the dental back. So what I am trying to tell all of you is that the dental is more important than the medical, right? Simply because the dental pays you off more in all the exams and the medical really does. Okay, so let, let, guys, guys, just let me. I, I will read through all those questions. Just give me a few moments, and uh, let me let me just finish. Okay, so <clears throat> where was I? Right. So now, now the, the next question that you need to ask yourself is why is it that people preparing for AIPG, the dental questions that they somehow find it difficult to crack other exams, and the reason is. That the AIPG 2007 to 2012 or 13 14, the trend has actually changed, right? The dental uh, questions being asked really, really don't uh, compare with all your state examinations and something like the case test, the comedy, and the money part, right? All these remaining dental entrance examinations have some very, very poor foundation and basic topics that they ask, impression materials, a lot of dental materials. All of these simple things are really not being asked. A lot in the uh, in the IPG exams anymore, correct? So what you do is you end up sort of concentrating on these really weird, out of the way topics without really concentrating on your basics, and as a result, you tend to compromise on your state entrance examination. So the idea is to, talk, according to me, the three best papers that reflect your your dental that give you the perfect understanding of your dental questions is CGI, Format K, and KSET. If you somehow, somehow manage to incorporate the solving of these three papers all through the year in your timetable, it will save you off at the end. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to say that you are going to attend these examinations, but still the overall rounding off of your dental, uh, your dental style, including the latest concepts like implants and slabs and so on and so forth, all of it. You know, it's really, really positive and really pays off at the end. Okay. Now, the second thing you need to ask yourself is, uh, let me let me tell you something interesting on the medical side as well. See, ask yourself that you got something like anatomy, physiology, biochemistry, pathology, pharmac, and PSM, right? The, the topics that you cover in the first and the second year and the PSM in the third year. Okay. So, um, right. <clears throat> so you have these topics, and if you look at your papers, you realize that these subjects actually cover majority of the marks in your medical section. These are also the topics that you have covered in your basic years, and so it actually pays to pay more time and more attention to detail on these topics. When it comes to something like general medicine and general surgery, what you realize is, and this is something that you guys will realize yourself. That if you are uh, looking at the slots of these questions, you realize that 50% of them are really basic questions that you actually can get without doing too much effort, and the remaining 50% of the questions might be a little tough or tricky or some really weird repeat. So if you can get the anatomy, physiology, biochemistry, the pathology, the microbiology, as well as the pharma and PSN correct, and you get 50% of the GM and the GS right, there's no harm. Right? I already told you that you can leave around 20 questions. Correct? If you can leave 20 questions and the, the really tough and really weird general medicine and general surgery questions come into that, or maybe the off-tal and dynamic questions come into that, then you know it really doesn't matter because you still manage to get a rank in the top 100. And at the end of the day, according to me, your job is to get a seat. Right? Getting a good rank is secondary, but your first job is to get a seat. So you need to basically create a strategy to give you maximum return on whatever you are putting in. So 
you basically need to try and get a more basic prep done so that you can at least get a seat rather than being really, 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 really dedicated towards one exam and moving on an MCM. Now, according to me, uh, there are three main sets of exams that we all go after. You've got the AMS exam at one end, you've got the AIPG exam right in the middle, and you've got all your state entrance examinations, the formal K, the KSM, PGI at the other end, right? And <clears throat> now, you have AIMS on the left, you've got AIMS on the left. Now, the issue with AIMS, according to me, is that number one, it has only two to three seats. Right, so even if I did attempt the exam with everything that I had, I would if I stood fourth rank or fifth rank or sixth rank, you know, apart from the prestige, it really, really doesn't, uh, you know, it really, really wouldn't actually help me out. You know, I would probably be really happy for around 15 to 20 days, and then after that, I would still be at the same position that I was before with no seat in my hand, and uh, you know, uh, I would have to actually repeat. So I kept playing the side simply because it just wasn't my cup of tea. Right. Once I did that, I automatically had just KIPG and I had the other entrance examination and I targeted the, the core <coughs> the core subject for the same. Uh, this does not mean that you shouldn't solve any of the AIMS question banks. You must solve them because as you see, a lot of the AIMS questions are repeated. But the AIMS exam, in order to track and get the first and second rank, requires dedicated reading and study of some really serious courses that we have, I just wasn't able to figure out throughout my entire prep. Uh, the next thing, the next thing that I can actually advise most of you is, uh, is basically on how to approach your pulse. Many people talk about giving importance to pulse subject-wise. Uh, personally, I feel that that can be a little, uh, <coughs> that can be a little, uh, according to me, it can be a little, it's, it's a very difficult to do it because what happens is that different subjects have got different amounts of importance given in pulse. The number of pages per subject are also different. So you really can't just say that I will give a week to every subject. It doesn't really work like that. What I would really recommend all of you to do is actually divide, uh, just basically count the number of pages you have in pulse and divide it by the total number of days that you have. And that way you will automatically end up giving the right amount of importance to every subject. So, uh, you know, you have got something like older pathology that is what, 100, 150 pages at the same time you've got something like endodontics and maybe you know, 50 pages or so. So you can't tell me that you're going to spend a week on endo and 150 uh, pages of, you know, you can't tell me you're going to spend a week in older pathology as well. But if you do it page-wise, if you decide that you're going to do so many amount of pages per day, you automatically even everything out and you automatically end up giving importance to such. Then, <clears throat> The next thing you need to ask yourself is, uh, yes, there is an issue about reading textbooks, right? Um, <coughs> guys, can you hear me now? Is, is this low enough? Okay. Okay, so I'm going to continue. Right, the next question that you need to ask yourself is about uh, reading textbooks. Right, the fact of the matter is that reading textbooks is absolutely important, but the question is you need to know what to read first. You, you will not know what to read unless and until you have solved all the MCQs. Right, so my serious advice to you would be to divide your day into three parts. Right? Your first part should be, a, there should be a part dedicated towards reading your textbooks, right, or reading your, and reading the pulse synopsis. The second part should be the solving MCQs. And the third part, at the end of the day, I would recommend that you all spend around one hour every day solving 100 MCQs of either part one or uh, dental matrix or target MGS, second names, or dental, you know, just, just pick up the authors that you like the most, right, of, of All India and of aim and solve 100 questions a day. So if you solve 100 questions a day of Vadwan, you will end up solving the entire Vadwan in one month. Right? Just questions and answers, questions and answers, questions and answers. Okay? One hour every day is mine. Okay? Then the next month you start off with the aim question bank, then the month after that with the Vadwan question bank, so on and so forth, all through the year. Simultaneously, if you keep a day of the week for forward K, K7, TGI, Right? Then what happens is after a period of time you finish off your pulse, you finish off your 
you click off all your questions uh, regarding the All India and the AIMS, you click off the common case, the case and the TGI, and now you have an overall view on all the important topics being covered in the entrance examination. And now you will be more equipped at reading what is important from your textbook. You can't possibly read everything from every textbook, but you can definitely read what is important. Right? For example, you realize that you know cost instrumentation is important, heterodontic instruments are important. You realize that hematology is extremely important and it ranges all the way from physiology to biochemistry to pathology. Yeah. Sorry guys, there's a marriage in the background. I really I we really try to ask them to keep quiet for some time, but you know this, I don't think they're gonna stop. Uh, this video will be uploaded later, right? So don't worry about that. But right. okay, so so uh, let me let, let me continue. Okay, guys, just just give me just give me a few minutes. Give me a few minutes. One second. Okay guys, uh, uh, we will restart at 4.30, is that fine? Hopefully the music will get over by then. Or do you guys want me to continue? Regarding question banks, regarding question banks, okay. So, regarding question banks, I would always say that you need to have at least three authors with you, right? Pick out any three books in the market that all your friends and seniors are talking about, that you heard a lot about. Keep them with you and choose the one that you like the most, use it as your base. Okay. Choose the book that you like the most and use it as a base and use the remaining two books for the content. For the controversial question. Now, personally, I use Dental Matrix as my base because uh, at that point of time, uh, Target MBS hadn't come out with the same book. But uh, once I did manage to buy the Target MBS second edition AIMS book, uh, it was a wonderful book. It had a lot of SR ship papers and uh, a lot of interesting questions, a lot of variations of questions which I really, really like. Can you hear me? Right. <clears throat> okay, so guys, for the AIMS question bank, I used the Dental Matrix because that was the only book available at that time in the market. I then bought the Dental Bites as well as the Target MBS second edition, which I both like, you know, which were also extremely good for certain controversial questions. The Target MBS AIMS second edition book has some really, really wonderful plus points uh, because it, it presents questions with variations. It has all this, the SR ship papers, the AIMS question banks that really, really help a lot. Like my base book would be Pulse, Neeraj Vadavan, Target MDS, in second edition, Dental Bites, and uh, Dental Matrix. These are, uh, these were my base books. Okay. Um, apart from this, uh, there is a question about how many times you need to repeat every book. Personally speaking, no, I don't think it's necessary to study with a friend. Right? I think you can do this by yourself, but if you are comfortable and you do find somebody, right, I did not, or if you do find somebody who is as focused as you are and as interested as you are, please go ahead. Having a friend really, really doesn't uh, impede your studies in any way and sometimes actually helps. Did I do national boards? No, I did not do national boards. I did not have the time to. My prep didn't allow me and uh, I had a lot of I had a lot of extra reading and stuff that I have to do. So, no time for any extra question now. Right. 
Right. Uh, target study material, actually, I didn't. I found them to be very, very extensive, but I actually prefer to make my own notes. So I actually did make my own notes and refer to them at the end of the day. Well, actually, that depends upon you. How many hours you have to study in a day totally depends upon you. Like I told you, if you if you divide the number of pages per day and you have a set goal, you can study anywhere between, I think, 8 to 12 hours a day. I think that's true. If you start with 8 hours a day and increase to 12 hours a day, it's fine. Yeah, I studied at home and uh, in the last three months, I went and I studied in the medical library. Two times revision people, I think if you do, okay, uh, let, let me just do this mathematically for you guys. If you look at your pulse and if you're doing it for the second time, believe me, one side of pulse will take a minimum of 10 minutes for you to read. Even if you know all the answers, just to read every question, go through all the options and successfully answer every question on that page is going to take you 7 to 10 minutes. Okay. If you, that means that in an hour you are not going to do more than six sides of pulse. In a, if you study 6 hours, if you are going to repeat questions and answers like this, so 6 hours you would have done only 46 pages. So if you are going to repeat Pulse and Mulitthana and Amitashish and Dental Bites all through the year multiple number of times, imagine how many precious units you are going to get and how little reading that you can do, how little uh, understanding and how little you know, concepts are going to go into your prep. You are going to be left nowhere if they ask you a tough question and if you are forced to choose between two options, it's going to be impossible if you have simply repeated the same question five times. Right, uh, Dr. Sahil Gagnani's blog actually was a wonderful blog. It really, really has wonderful things to say. Um, yeah, my major difference between the first and second attempt is that I actually uh, read a lot on the site. Right? Like I told you guys, you need to divide your sections and you need to figure out all the, you need to figure out, hello, right, so you are telling me, yeah, I, uh, you telling us, okay, just, just give me a second, let me just read your questions please. Uh, guys, when I tell you to spend an hour every day with the MCQs all through the year, this is only so that you become familiar with the topics that are being asked. Okay. Uh, what happens is, if I make you read the questions and get the answers all through the year, it solves two problems. Number one, it makes you familiar with the questions. Secondly, you come to know what's being asked. Right? You realize that a lot of blood is being asked or a lot of kidneys being asked, you realize that a lot of impression is being asked, a lot of implants are being asked and you can only do this if you are continuously in touch with the question line. So you have to be doing just a hundred MCQs every day all through the year will make you familiar with the question but at the same time will teach you and will help you pick out the trends and help you read the right topics from all the standard textbooks. Now which and what to read, see you have standard textbooks, you've got Robin, you've got Harrison, you've got Guyton, Genome, Unfortunately, I will not tell you what to be. Right? The fact of the matter is that you need to figure out that on your own. Because you need to learn to pick out the trend and then you need to go ahead and you need to read the stuff being asked. If I tell you everything, it's going to rob you of an integral part of your prep. So, picking out trends, you need every Sunday for, for, for predominantly dental papers, keep nice for sorting 100 MCQs a day. And what you will realize is that after three to four months, you will start picking out trends automatically. Yeah, of course, you have to solve, you have to solve papers. I mean, there's no way out. You have to solve papers. Your easy questions consist of repeat. Your easy questions consist of, um, you know, uh, questions based on repeat. So you have to, you have to go through all your question answers and papers. Okay, my major difference between the first and second attempt. First attempt, I only did MCQs. I only did MCQs in my first attempt. Uh, I landed nowhere in my second attempt, doing MCQs, picking out trends, reading textbooks. 
Did I focus on AIPG the most? I I would say that I gave 60% to 65% to AIPG and 35 to 40% to the remaining dental entities and families. Uh, last two months preparation only questions and answers. Uh, everything that you can get your hand on. Uh, that should be the last two months. In the last two months, you can't afford to learn anything new. You can only afford to do questions and answers. You can afford to buy the latest supplements, the latest papers that have come onto the market. You can do them, and that's about it. Guys, uh, you know. I'll be very frank, I am not getting into what subject to concentrate and what to lead. I really would love to, but the fact of the matter is that you guys need to figure this out on your, on your own. It, it's the best part of the it's the best part of your prep and it will really, really help you out in the end. Right? Alright. Uh, see, I, I classify the North Indian authors uh, as a as a set of books that you need to do only towards the end of the year and you need to do them very selectively. If you try and do them at the beginning of the year, you will compromise on your prep, you will compromise on your basis because those questions and answers do not have any explanation and no references. So keep them right at the end when you just need to go to them really, really fast. And if you remember them at the exam, you know, well and good. If you don't, it's, it's still fine. I mean, uh, you you prepared so well throughout the year that you still will be able to get a good rank. There's really nothing you can do about the wrong answers in uh, in any of in the, any of the North Indian author books. You just have to go with it. That's why I'm telling you all do it at the end of the year. So at least you guys are strong enough and capable enough of picking up the wrong answers and knowing that you will not mark the same uh, in your examinations. Or at least if you are going to mark the same answers, you're doing it you know out of choice. Right. Uh, Guys, uh, let me be very frank. In internship, uh, in my first attempt, that was during internship, I really didn't follow the best way of studying. Like I told you, I saw only MCQs, and that got me nowhere. Plus, I had traveled a lot to and from my college, so it just wasn't conducive to studying for me. No, no, guys, guys, the best part of your prep is always figuring it out on your own. Picking out the trends is important. So. Pay close attention to important topics, have your standard textbooks at hand and do not be afraid to read. Right? Your, your reading is not going to go to waste, I guarantee you that. Okay, uh, every attempt is equally stressful guys and I would suggest that you do engage in some sort of activity to keep your mind off it. Right? For me it was squash, I did squash all through the year and it did help me uh, it did help me concentrate better on my studies and it helped me, you know, it, it, it was actually monumental in, in helping me achieve what I had today. Right, uh, the Manipal exam is a perfect exam of, you know, of why my, of why my preparation method was so, uh, was so successful because I started picking out friends in all the papers, I started reading into them and because of that Manipal became a lot easier for me. Guys, yeah, uh, you know, community dentistry has two parts. If, if you're talking about the uh, in the indices, there's no better book than COVID Peter. If you're talking about biostatistics, there's no better book than Vivek J. P. S. Guys, subject wise and paper wise, you have to do both. You cannot only do subject wise, you can't only do paper wise, you have to concentrate on both simultaneously or to the other. No, I only prepared, I didn't practice. Uh, right, uh, guys, for community dentistry, there is no better book than Sogan Peter and uh, Vivek Jain for uh, preventive social medicine. Vivek Jain, Vivek Jain. Right, so guys, 
uh, the list of books and everything that I did is also mentioned on the target MDS uh, Facebook group, right? So if you guys go there, I've written a detailed list of my book and prep tips. So you can get, you guys can go there and actually uh, read about all the books that I did. But please remember, you need to do them only selectively, right? And uh, uh, yeah, you need to do them selectively. You can't do everything. You don't have that much time. Yeah, okay, uh, so is there... <coughs> Okay, so I see some of my friends are actually there on the chat as well. Guys, uh, you know, nice to meet you. Right, uh, guys, you will have to go through, you will have to go through the entire explanation, there's no way out. If you don't understand the explanation, you will have to open the entire textbook and you will have to go through it. And that's why you have self-assessment and review books that I mentioned in my uh, prep list. If you go through those, not only do they have the theory material, but they also have questions and answers explained there. So if you first do the self-assessment and review book and then open Mulit Khan and Amitabh, it will really, really help. Uh, I did not read across, but it is a highly recommended book by most of my seniors and friends and a lot of people who have cracked exams have recommended across. Right, uh, test series are definitely uh, useful, though I always prefer to start doing a test series towards the end, end of the year after I have, uh, you know, perfected my basics and I prefer, I, I prefer to do it like that. Yeah, self-assessment and review books. There are various self-assessment and review books available on the market. I've mentioned them on my target MDS uh, course. If you read them and then you uh, go to Murat Khanna and Amitashish, it would really, really help you understand it better. Uh, guys, uh, I would I would say that you know do not uh, repeat questions on an average there are around 100 to 120 repeat questions in AIPG. Right, yeah, approximately 100 questions would be repeated. But, but you know, they could be twisted repeats as well, then they really don't count as repeats. So if you count a twisted repeat as a repeat, well, yes, that's up to you. Right, uh, I followed Dental Bite for PGI, Format K and KSS. Uh, I found the book really, really helpful. Pulse is the best book to start with. Pulse is always the best book to start with. Right. Guys, I'm really, really sorry, but I do not know about UTPG. Right guys, that, that's exactly what I'm saying. I would, I would suggest that you do not go subject wise. What, what I mean is, do not try and finish off a subject in a stipulated amount of time. I would rather like it if you simply count the number of pages in pulse, divide it by the amount of time you have, and decide how many papers you, how many pages of pulse you want to do per day. So you will end up finishing every subject in the right amount of time giving the right amount of importance. Okay, so the problem is that you have different subjects having different amounts of importance as you see Pulse also gives the right amount of pages for every subject based on the importance. So you rather do it page wise than subject wise and you know, in the end, you will complete it in the right amount of time. According to me, if you do around 30 uh, pages of pulse a day, it seems fair enough. You know, uh, that, that's a pretty good speed. And towards the end of the year, you could probably increase it to around 60 to 80 pages a day. Right? Really, 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 really quick. 
question and answer at the end of the year, but at the beginning, you give a good amount of time reading every question and your references. I told you that you reserve time in the morning for reading, so you always have time to chase after whatever you want to read. And you know, uh, because if you continue this all through the year, it will really, really help. Oh guys, again, you know, in biochemistry, your your best hope is actually to simply go through the medical papers and look at the relevant topics being asked and then read it from your Satyanarayan. Like a lot of glucose, a lot of amino acids, uh, fats, and urea, etc. etc. Oh guys, I have never used dental spectrum. I really, really don't have any idea about it. I, I, I have revised everything only twice. I did not have time to do it any more than that. There was really, really no time on my hand. It was a, a very, very cut to cut press. I barely managed to finish everything twice. So I don't know. I mean, like I told you guys, one side of pulse takes you 7 to 10 minutes. Okay, one side of Murukhana, I don't know how much time it's going to take you. I mean, if you go on multiplying it and you multiply it by the amount of time they're going to repeat those questions again and again and again, it really, really makes no sense to waste all the time repeating the same question. Right, uh, no, I did not go through dental, I went only through pulse and I went through dental by the by Gauri Shankar. So, Gauri Shankar says dental bias is a really, really helpful book. Uh, my score in Manipal was 161. Okay, so uh, that's a very good uh, question. How do you saw the 40 pretty MCQs and the 20 risky MCQs? Okay, so the 40 risky MCQs will only be solved if you have dedicated a good amount of time to reading your, reading all those important topics that you have felt are being asked all throughout your uh, examination. So unless and until you read them, you will not get those 40 tricky questions. You will have to read your references, you will have to read the topics that you feel are important, and that is the way you get your 40 tricky questions and the 20 risky questions. Your job is to reduce it to two options and then, you know, take God's name on every question and hope for the best. Uh, according to me, the Maharashtra TV paper is a very, very basic paper. So if you have solved your comment K, your K set, your PGI, and you have, you know, your if you if you have solved along with your AIPG, the comment K set and PGI papers all through the year, you will have a very, very, very good chance at Maharashtra T. Uh, my score in Maharashtra T D was 82. Okay. Right. Uh, the question is given wrong in bite and pulse. Uh, so it is your job that by your second revision, when you're going over it the second time, you will automatically start picking up all those uh, questions that you find are wrong, right? So uh, a good sign of a good press is being able to pick out uh, a question that has a wrong answer and being able to figure out what the right answer should actually be like. So uh, guys, don't look at it as a problem. Please remember that every book is going to have some errors and it's your job to find it out. And if you do, it shows that you're doing really, really well. Uh, right. How could I solve subjects and paper at a time? Okay. So, all you need to do is you need to reserve a set number of days for paper wise and a set number of days for uh, a, a subject page wise prep in one week and continue the same thing all the way up. What was my study plan between two exams? Okay. Well, I will always spend the last two weeks targeting the exam ahead of me and then two weeks after and you know, uh, if 
I would spend the next two weeks targeting the exam uh, after that. Guys, AIMS has never been my cup of tea. I'm really sorry. I really can't help you with that. I really haven't managed to grasp uh, how AIMS works. Uh, how many hours a day did I study? Well, uh, starting off, you can you know uh, you can start off with around eight hours a day, and then you can move on to around twelve to fourteen hours a day. How did you go about controversial questions? Oh, uh, guys. You know your entire question paper is not made of controversial questions. There's just going to be a very, very, very few controversial questions in a paper. You don't have to worry about them, right? The best part, according to me, of a controversial question is a lot of people are getting it wrong, right? So if a lot of people are going to get it wrong, it works in your favor, right? If you got it wrong, it works in your favor. If everybody else is getting it wrong, it works in your favor. It's a controversial question. Uh, I would rather have you. Concentrate on getting all your easy questions right and the tricky questions right, and uh, learning to get yourself down to two options and then picking the one uh, which you feel is most appropriate. Right. So don't worry about controversial questions. Don't worry about not in the north or controversial questions. Really, everybody is the same. Uh, you know, having the same problems as you are. So uh, you should you should actually be happy if the controversial question is being asked. Okay, so uh, how do you split ten months, right? In the first four months, you need to finish off pulp. You need to finish off your formative case set and PGI papers. You need to have a morning slot reserved for uh, reading and your synopsis, and a night slot for your AI PG and AIM uh, hundred questions a day uh, team. Now, once you've done this, in four months, you will actually have a very very good idea of You know what questions are being asked. You know what are the trends that the uh, the, the exam setters are following. And now you will start off with uh, after the first four months. Now you will start off with your medical, your AIMS, and your Vardhan question. Now see the problem with the medical, the AIMS, and the Vardhan question is you treat every question as a challenge, and you actually tend to spend a lot of time on them. When in reality is that if you've done the first four months, now you are more prepared to know which question you should really chase. Right? Is it worth uh, solving this question in detail? Right? What you realize after your first four months is that this question actually isn't really that important. It was a question just meant to, uh, you know, test sometimes test your luck, sometimes test whether you really, really, really read so much that you actually got it. So this really, you need to have a grasp of your basics before you move on to your aim, your uh, medical, and your bad uh, one. Uh, and so that four months, then the three months. And then uh, after that, it's just a matter of revision. 2007 onwards. Uh, five seconds. I'm on five seconds. Guys, for shape selection, I'm on five seconds, and for the CSS question, I mark. Uh, I don't really. I think I uh, mark. I think I mark uh, high protein. I think I mark high protein. Yeah, I mark high protein because your nasal secretions have got a lot of protein in them as well. Uh. Could you just repeat that? Uh, could you just the second last question on the chat box? Could you please uh, be more clear about your question, please? Seven one six zero two seven. Uh, right. See. I do not think. Question with false statement about fluoride. Okay. Uh, see, uh, guys, I'm going to I'm going to ask you again. Do not concentrate on the controversial question, right? The controversial questions aren't really important in the larger scheme, right? The controversial questions 
do not decide your thesis examination. The beauty of a controversial question is that it's a controversial question, right? A lot of people are going to avoid taking the risk and are not going to mark it, right? You study your basic spell, you choose an answer according to what you think is the best, and you mark it and you hope for the best, right? Uh, because let's be frank, your entire paper doesn't rest on just five controversial questions. Okay, it actually rests on getting those 160 questions right. Okay. Hey, the black pencil barrier. That is, I really don't remember the. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Six zero three two six three is right. Okay, okay. Right. How to choose friends? The only way you can start picking out friends is if you know. If you sum, if you basically, um, uh, you if you manage to cover, okay, like I said, in your first four months slot, since you covered a large number of questions, you are now ready to start picking out questions. Okay, you need to have an exposure to all the papers that are being set, and once you do that, you will start picking out friends. Right? If you reserve a slot in the morning every day to compulsory read, you will actually start reading the right thing. Correct? If I tell you that every day in the morning you need to read for around two hours, you are not going to read something that is absolutely useless. Right? You are actually going to, you will pick up something that you know is being asked in the exam and slowly and steadily you will improve at picking out the right topic. Oh yeah, I took only a test series. I did not take a lecture series. I did not take any lecture series at all. I took only a test series. After my first, okay, right. Uh, always go, always go with dental first. Never with medical first. Your dental is more important than your medical. Uh, <clears throat> right. So seven one six zero seven three. Okay. So if what you're saying is absolutely true. If you start picking out any chapter and you try to read it from you know beginning to end, it's not going to work. There just isn't enough time, and you do tend to lose confidence. So that's why I'm saying you always start off reading. The topic that you know are being asked. So you start off reading dental stuff, you start off reading your clips, you start off reading students, okay? And you wait, uh, and as you slowly start picking out trends, you will start, now you can move on to reading what is being asked in the paper. So you start off reading something safe that you know is being asked in all the exams. You can start reading amalgam, you can start reading raisin, right? You can read the first five chapters of students and then move on to reading, you know, the tougher topics that you start realizing that the examiner is asking a lot about. For the list of books, please look at the Target MDF Facebook page. It has everything that you need to know about all the books, you know, or, you know, about <coughs> all the review books and, you know, everything under the sun, right? Okay, so, uh, right, motivation for my second attempt, I just wanted to make my parents proud uh, and I wanted to make myself proud as well, that was about it, so I, I think I, I achieved what I set out to do. Well, your best motivation is, is uh, are your parents. I don't think uh, you have a better motivation than them. You want to see them happy, you will automatically study hard. Uh, like I said, please refer to Target MDS, uh, the online uh, the Facebook group. Right? It has all the important authors and all the things that you have to do from their respective books. Right? So if you go there, there is a full list given down with every North Indian author's name and the important subjects right next to them in brackets.
I would say that you should revise only questions and answers before your exam. Uh, you cannot afford to read any new topics or do anything new before your exam because it will only confuse and destroy whatever basic you set in them. Explanations are a must. Always. For everything. You have to do the explanation. Otherwise you will never be able to justify your answer in any examination. You will never be able to choose between the two options. You will never be able to solve the 40 50 questions. Right, and you will never have the guts to go from 150 to 180. Right, you will not have the guts to go from 150 to 180 in the IBD based or in your examination hall if you if you hadn't read your explanation and you know your basis. You need those guts, and those guts only come when you have done your explanation and read your text. Right, and when I say read your textbook, I mean only selectively, not everything. Do you you can't possibly read everything. So it's just selective, selective, selective reading. Okay. Target MDS Facebook group, right? There's a target MDS Facebook group. Please join that. It was one of the most important reasons for my success. Uh, it has around 17 to 18 thousand people there, and all of them are interested in sharing their opinions with you. And uh, all of you will have, you know, somebody who's going to answer your questions and give you wonderful ideas on how to approach every question. Guys, you, you can't really afford to do anything new before an exam, right? An exam is, uh, an, every exam is a yearly prep. So, you approach it. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, guys, I'll, one second. Yeah, guys, you can definitely go for a third attempt, but you know, just, you just need to rethink your strategy. Uh, uh, I'm just going to take a 15 minute break and I'll get Welcome back everybody. Can we continue? This is going to be the last session. We have already had Dr. Paul Mathai speak on his strategies, he answered various questions, many of the questions were repetitive in pattern but he took time and patiently has answered everybody. So what we, what I am trying to do is we will have last six questions and these six questions we have designed based on what you have not asked till now. Okay, so to give you an idea of something you had in your mind but you have not asked till now. So let us hear it from the winner, Dr. Paul Matai. I have six specially designed questions for him. My first question to you is, you seem to be a highly determined, motivated and inspired kind of person who has clear view of what life, clear objectives in life and you have achieved what you get, get set out to. Suppose you had not got these ranks. Suppose you had not got any of these ranks. What would have done in your life? What is your plan B? So uh, actually, there was no, there was no plan B. There was, there was only this. I had nothing else in my pocket or no other plan. And uh, this was my only way out of uh, the situation that I got myself into. So this was it. It was a do what I seen, and there was this, uh, there was this no other way out. It was either MDS or I don't know. Okay, I don't know anything after that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Amazing, um, amazing. This is this is the answer. I don't know what he wanted, what he had in his mind, but this is what I always love to hear. There was only one plan, plan A, and as they say, the moment there is plan B, plan A suffers. So other than getting an MDS seat, he had no fallback plan. It was only about getting an MDS seat, and today we have him here with so many MDS seats. He can choose anything from whole India. That is called as a great attitude and the perfect achievement. Fine. My second question is, I know Paul Mathai for so many years. He has always been a topper throughout his BDS. All four years he has been a topper. Once he came out to the college, then also he studied for MBA Centers exam. My question to you is, the way the students prepare in their BDS time, and once they 
start preparing for entrance exam the way they prepare an in internship and then they prepare in the second attempt all of three of them are different which one you think is more mature and which one should they adopt right from the beginning which one you did uh so see the thing is that from the first first year to the fourth year according to me the baby study in dental college is absolutely useless and pathetic it really really doesn't teach you anything and it just based on all the wrong values so in spite of being i was from a private college and in spite of being a topper all the four years getting scholarships and merit certificates it really really didn't help me one bit or uh, in my first attempt right in fact it was actually a hurdle because i, I expected so much from myself and the reality is i studied in, in the wrong way for all my four years and i had to really really rethink my entire approach so what i realized is that you need to start preparing for mds from day one the day you step into your dental college you need to be start you need to start preparing from that very day and if you do that then nothing like it nothing like it okay so see college wise every institute and every college has its own objective they teach you fine there an undergraduate person has to appear for a university examination pass its tier can go to the next stage there is the objective are different here the objective are different so what he means to say is once you come out of the college and start preparing for mba center exam your approach needs to be more mature and i think that gets to the next question that i already have in the list there are about 15000 questions in the market if you collect all the mcq books all the institute 15000 you can add some more you can it can go to 18000 Suppose I have a student who has done all these eighteen thousand questions like who twice. So does this quantity matter, or is the quality that matters in the end? And what happened in your case? Um, see, guys, <clears throat> there's a fixed amount of time, and uh, you need to just basically pick out a few books, and you need to study them properly, and you need to study them uh, by reading your references, and you know, learning to pick out what you should read and what you shouldn't read. and that's what really comes in the end and not uh, just solving all the mcqs and repeating them again and again and again it doesn't help and for the more you will lose consistency you will you will not you will no longer be consistent you cannot maintain uh, the you know you can't maintain the spirit of doing anything for five times it gets mundane it gets boring you need something that spices up your prep you need something that makes your prep a lot of fun you need to make notes you need to You need to think. You need to imagine. Sit back, relax. You need to have some day off. You know, have some time off in the day. You can play. You need all these things because otherwise, you just, you just, you just, you just can't crack any exam if you plan to just repeat the question again and again and again. It, it, it doesn't work. And I tried it in my first attempt, and it just doesn't work at all. Right. So the. Answer is loud and clear. It has to be the quality. How you manage it consistently throughout your preparation phase. My next question is: You have been a target student, and our philosophy has been about science, four concepts to elevate the level of science in the mindset of the student. Is this something good, or we need to follow some shortcuts just for entrance exam? Oh. Uh, You know, actually, see, after my after my second attempt, I can tell you very frankly that there's no way out except the hard way, right? You have to read your textbook, you have to study your references, and uh, you know, uh, there is a limit to how far your test series can take you because this is also an individual effort at the end of the day, right? Your test series can give you so much, you know, uh, sir can teach you this much at the end of the day. He's got only so much time. He needs to do other things also, right? And The fact of the matter is that you need to put in that effort, and you need to be smart in your effort. And if you do that, then you know nothing like it. There's nothing like it. You just you just have to you just have to have an open mind all through the year. And please, please have fun all through the year. This is my sincere request yeah. to all of you. Please have fun. There is no way there is no way you can go for an entire year without fun. You need you need fun. Please, great. My next question is your question about seven hundred days. Two years. You have access to a lot of material. You have access to, you know, um, um, multiple, many lectures. How was your experience with target state lectures? How was the content you were very happy? Very, very happy with the content that was given. How do you rate them basically? Whatever your opinion. Uh, 
uh, see the, the target the target educational lectures uh, I have watched a few of them and they you know they they were good I mean they sure has actually concentrated on all the basic concepts and try to teach you on and give you on the right way but but I did have this issue with her about the target educator question and those papers that he says every Sunday because believe me even I used to come out of those papers crying and maybe you know I I, I just uh, you know, at the end of the day, or you it's like yeah. yeah. When, when you when you demoralize that paper, I was uh, I was I just had a very bad time. Let me just tell you what what would happen when I came my uh, target I would study for seven days, give the test, then I would have eight days to try and uh, you know just uh, become fine and study for the next seven days. So I have told sir that you please prepare a, a, a separate video on how to crack the target education <laughs> because because there is no other because I couldn't. And believe me, I found I find those papers stuff. And it's only after my second attempt that I can tell you that now in today, if I go back, I find them easy. But in my first when I when I first attempted them, when I first attempted them, uh, it was oh, it was it was uh, just <laughs> Sunday was, was was the worst day of the week for me. Okay. So what do you suggest then? Should they be trying these tough questions also, or they should just become happy every time by solving easy questions? By getting high rank, and does it really help by solving all types of questions throughout the year to get an overall idea of the entire spectrum of science? Uh, right. So, uh, you know, so has a very very valid point. Fact of the matter is, like I told you before, your paper is divided into four parts: like 120, 40, 20, and 20. Right. Your job is to get those 120 questions correct. That's entirely your job. Right. The next. 40 questions is the job of both, is your job as well as if you're going for a coaching class for the test series, it's their job to help you get those 40 questions right. The remaining 20 questions are going to come only if you get boost all through the year long because what you see in those 20 questions is some really, 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 uh, a really, really stable mind for those remaining 20 questions. And the only way you can do it is if you just have a, you know, if you have to face such questions all through the year, right? So, uh, today I can tell you that you don't need to solve those tough questions and get them right. You don't need to get those solved questions. You don't need to get those tough questions right. to uh, get a rank in your examination. You don't. You just need to have the gut and you just need to have uh, the stable mind to know whether you should leave it or whether you should reduce it to two options and attempt it. And you should know that what is really important is just the 120 and the 40 questions. The remaining 40 questions just you, you can't prepare for them, man. You just will have fun, go, reduce to two points, attempt it, leave those 20 different points about it. Exactly. And, and you need to, you need to just, uh, you, you, you just need to follow that, man. You just, you can't do anything else. Right? The problem is that they do want, they do want somebody who is studying really, really hard. Okay. Yeah, thanks. That, that's all that I have to say about that. Somebody is asking about luck factor. I have been consistently asking, what about luck factor you think? Uh, uh, guys, uh, you know, luck, the, when you use the word luck, it's a very deceptive word. According to me, you need to get down to those two questions and then comes the luck factor. The problem is most of us can't even get it down to two questions and expect to have our luck work on three options and four options. That really doesn't count. Your job, your job is to prepare for luck to do magic. And for luck to do with magic, you need to first get it down to two questions, right? And if you if you get it down to two questions, then anyway, man, it's 50 50, right? Everybody else is going to get it. You know, most of them, it's a tough question. Most of the people are getting it wrong. Most of the people are leaving it. So, you know, you are competing with very few people on those, on that tough question. So, your job, get to two options, and then, I don't know, I, I pray to God, I'm asking for your help, and, you know, that's about it. I mean, what more can you do? Right. God really helped me out in the time, clearly it wasn't just, you know, human achievement, there was a lot of divine intervention, so, you know, I don't know. No, no, the divine intervention he is talking about, it exists, but only when you impress God. Yeah. And I'm sure yeah. Paul Mathai has impressed God to no end, he has seen him working, he has seen him putting in consistent work, so anybody would have got impressed, and God was the first person who got impressed by Paul Mathai's work, and he has showered his blessings immensely, that's why we see Paul Mathai getting all top ranks, the stellar performance, we congratulate him profusely and we hope that he keeps his influence and his motivation 
spread throughout the community and people keep coming up with quality preparation and hard work. Did you just prepare or do anything else right away? I have already told you keep your mind fresh, get into recreational activities. You always said it. Oh, uh, right. Let me just let me just answer this. Uh, uh, if you want to go for a third attempt, you know it's a it's a fair thing. If you want to, if you feel that you are capable, you should go ahead. But please rethink your strategy and please understand. Uh, you know, please understand where you went wrong, right? Or uh, you need to figure that out first. If you go for your third attempt without realizing where you went wrong, and if you go blindly, and if you if you just uh, approach the exam the same thing that you did last time, it's not going to work. So before you go for your third attempt, just rethink your strategy. Uh, read about what's going on, right? Ask other people around you, and you know, just just sit down and make a decision, right? And uh, what kind of notes did I make? Well, I I filled around 20 or uh, 100 page A4 size book of notes, right? Uh, 20 books, and um, to be very frank, I did not revise any of those notes, right? Uh, I did not revise any of those notes, but you see, the best part of making notes is that when you are reading something, and when you are forced to choose between four sentences to write one sentence down, you are automatically doing a revision, and you are really really thinking hard, correct? So making notes actually does help. Okay, you do not ever have to revise them again, but just the act of making them really, really helps you out. Physical activity. Yeah, yeah. I, I seriously suggest a physical activity. It could be physical, it could be the you know uh, the AIPG eighth ranker, Mr. Devraj played the violin for a year. That's what he wanted to do. I, I decided to play squash, which was something that I never tried before. Okay, I was being beaten by 7th standard and 8th standard children. So my day would be solving MCQs, then getting beaten by these children in the 7th and 8th standard, then you know, feeling feeling really, really unhappy about that, but still having a lot of fun, and then going back and studying again. You need that physical activity, you need that fun every day. You, you absolutely can't do without it. That is exactly what will help you be consistent all through the year. That is exactly what will help you think properly, you know, it's just you, you need it, you need that. One question. If if we take the time back, mm -hmm. this is 2014. Right. Let me take the time backwards, we go back to 2012. Right. And you are starting it all over again. Right. What is that one mistake you will not do when you start it again all over? I will I will the one thing that I would do if when I started my first uh, if, if this was my first attempt was to strip down look at the paper and do the map behind the paper. Understand that I don't need to get the tough questions correct. I only need to get my easy questions correct. Okay guys, let me give you an example. You won't believe this. In my All India question paper, there was a, there was a question on auto wire, uh, auto wire, uh, what is used in this, I think as an Adams class, what mill, right? And I read it as gauge and I marked gauge. So, what you hear, so exactly, so that's a perfect example, that's a perfect example of, uh, you know, how an easy question is really, really what determines where you stand and it's not the tough question. You need to get all the easy questions right first. Right, so that, that was an excellent question. I knew the formula for gauge, I knew the formula for mill, I knew the formula for every also thing under the sun, but I still got it wrong. So, and I even got this question wrong. The uh, okay, I even got this question wrong. That the the, the fifth that developed in the place of a two. Okay, this shouldn't have confused me. But I just read one word in the question, something on steroid rescue, and I just got confused. So that again brought my rank down. So you know, it, it's really about getting those easy questions right, those tricky questions right. This is what I want you guys to understand. Do the math behind the paper. Sit down. Figure out where the topper stands and how much how much you have to do to reach it, right? And that's it. Okay. Okay, that was what one thing you would have done. Exactly. What you wouldn't have done. You wouldn't you, you will not do this time. What will you do? What will I not do this? Not do this. Never. So there is nothing. I mean, there is nothing. <laughs> so there was something that unless you took your time. There was so this time you want to avoid it. No, sir. This time I sat and I thought about how I'm going to study before I started my exam. I asked 
a few people that I trusted, uh, you know, a lot like a, like my senior and my parents, etc. And uh, you know, and I made a proper timetable. Yeah. All through the year, and I, and the, uh, this is the very important thing: make a timetable that spans only one week, right? A one week timetable is very doable. You just need to think for seven days, right? And then you again repeat the same thing for the next seven days, and you repeat it again and again and again all through the year. Seven days only. If you have this master plan that spans over one year, I can't do it, right? I was a one week guy. I'm a short term planner, right? So seven days, seven days, seven days, seven days, all through the year. Make a nice timetable that you want to follow all through the year. That that that's the best thing that you can do. Yeah. And there is an important point coming here. How to suggest? What do you suggest for PHU exam? See, this is a very important session we had. He has told you all those things. How to be focused. How to have a timetable and how to prepare. Now with that, if you learn everything, then you will get ranked in all the exams. The thing is, he has not prepared separately for each exam. He has given all the exams from your court ranks in all the exams. The thing is, coming up to his level, and you'll crack. You'll be able to crack any exam under the sun. Right. Uh, I didn't stand anywhere my first attempt in Maharashtra. I didn't have a rank in all India. My rank was two two five zero. You know, uh, very 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 poor rank. Right. So that was my first attempt for you, and in my first attempt, I am I was doing exactly the repetitive MCQ pattern where you just repeat MCQs again and again and again. Didn't work for me at all. Okay, I think with this we will come to the end of the session. I once again profusely thank. Paul Mathai, I congratulate him for his outstanding achievement. Keep us inspired. Let many more ranks come with your guidance, and we would like to see you in one of the best colleges in the branch you always wanted to get. And very good luck for your entire MBA tenure of three years, and greater luck for the coming of MBA. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you for wishing Dr. Paul Mathai good luck. Yeah, and last words from Dr. Paul. Uh, guys, uh, about the blog, yes, I, I will make a blog. I understand that not everybody is on Facebook. I, I will uh, write something down, right? I, I'll show you all my timetable, etc. It's really, very really difficult for me to explain it orally, okay? And uh, you know, thank you. Uh, I'll be taking. I will be going for oral microscopic surgery. Uh, right now, my choice is uh, my dental college. Okay. Thank you, and guys, please have fun, and please remember that every Sunday paper is not about the tough questions; it's about those easy questions that you get to get right. Right? Remember your, remember your AIBG paper. Remember what I said: you just need 160 correct questions. Right? 160 correct questions, and you talk India. Right? You talk India with 160 correct questions. 40 questions you don't need. Right? You don't, you don't want. Right, you just mark those twenty risky questions because God knows how you did those one fifty questions. Right, you think you did it correct, so you have to take a little risk to you know plus and minus questions here and there. Okay, so please have fun and remember, it's not about the tough questions. This is my, this is just my most important advice to you, my heartfelt advice. And just get to laugh. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you for it. It was a great session. Hope everybody enjoyed it. We'll meet you again. Next time, a different subject, and hopefully another interview with somebody else. Thank you so much.